right now we are heading into the Iao Valley. Today we're starting our day off here in the Iao Valley and behind me is the Iao Needle. We've just walked in and it's beautiful. There is a $10 parking fee and a $5 per person entry fee. So keep that in mind when you're heading over to this park when you're planning your trip. This is just where we're starting our day. We have a lot of things on the agenda, so we're gonna keep on rolling because we're heading back to Hana a little bit later on. This is one of the wettest spots on Earth, and we're actually here on a crystal clear day. I said it rains about an inch a day, and I feel really lucky we got such great weather. If you come over to the Iowa Valley, don't forget to come down on the trail here by the river. Just really impressive to look up at these tree-covered mountains. You're here in a rainforest and wow, what a nice day. We lucky to just not have any rain. Uh, this is one, of, like I said earlier, it's one of the wettest places on earth. They average an inch of rain a day. And uh, it's not a, really a cloud in the sky right now. And it's just incredible. I cannot recommend a visit to the Ia Valley enough. The needle is very, very cool. The setting is awesome, especially how it's created with the trade winds. Kind of learn about that history. And then also, just how green and lush this area is. It's, uh, it's really a must do in Maui. But we have a big day, so we are going to keep rolling. <gasps> So one of the top places I wanted to try when we were in Maui was Ten Roof Maui. Now their chef, Sheldon Simeon, has been on Top Chef twice. Unfortunately, he's runner up both times, but he grew up on the big island in Hilo where it rains a lot and Ten Roof is kind of a callback to the tin roof he had on his house growing up and that sound of rain hitting that tin roof. So his food is all about family and I really wanted to try this spot and I'm glad we grabbed it for lunch as we head out to the road for Hana. We stopped at a local beach because it's a takeout only spot. We got the Mokiko chicken and the chopped steak and they both look delicious. It's chicken thighs that are double fried, covered in a sauce. I got them over garlic noodles. That's one of the things that he's known for is garlic noodles. Look at that. Those garlic noodles. A nice big piece of chicken breast here. One of the things the chef talks about, he's got a cookbook, which I'm gonna buy when I get back home. And it's how to cook real Hawaiian food. And I know that, you know, Hawaiian food isn't necessarily just spam and ham and pineapple and pizza. Hawaii is a very ethnically diverse place. You have a lot of Filipinos, Japanese, you have native Hawaiians. And so there's some fusion of that food, but each culture brought their most favorite dishes. And they kind of, you know, picked and chose their favorite dishes from all the different cultures. So you do see a lot of fusion on the menus, but you actually see some traditional items. One of the fun parts of coming here is trying all the different um, foods and learning about why they're here and what they're doing with them now and how the food is shaping their culture. I have the sliced flat iron steak over rice. Adam ordered it animal style. It's not exactly like in and out burger animal style, but it seems like maybe it's a little nod. Oh, all right. I feel like we just keep having amazing meals here in Maui. Every every place we've gone has been absolutely amazing. Mm, this is just another one to add to the list. I think we're gonna lay at this beach for a little bit, and then we're gonna hit the road to Hana for the second time. It's gonna be a much more relaxed trip over there, but it's such a nice day and such a nice drive. Why not do it again? I like this beach a lot. It's got beautiful water, nice waves crashing. I wouldn't swim here. 
there are lifeguards down a ways, but uh, just to lay out, peace out. Speech is doing it for me. We are stopping off at Ho'okipa Beach. We can see surfers and sea turtles and we just want to go get a closer look. This could be Turtle Town, but it's not. There's like 50 turtles down there. Wow, I could have stayed and watched those sea turtles all day. I've never seen anything like that before, and it was absolutely fascinating. I really could have just stood there and watched them, but now we are gonna keep on heading up the road to Hana. We, our major destination today is Wayanapanapa State Park to see the Black Sand Beach. We missed it the other day. That's a big reason why we are heading back up because I know that it's a must do on this drive. The reason we did not go to Wayanapanapa Park the other day was because it has, um, they have a reservation system. So, and they don't take day of reservation. So you have to book it at least 24 hours before. And when we decided to drive up the road to Hana the other day, we, um, it was a bit of a, you know, last minute decision. We had woken up early and we were like, let's go to Hana. So um, if you are doing this drive, make sure that you reserve your parking and entrance into Wayanapanapa State Park because um, you don't want to be like us and miss out. But we're not missing out because we're making sure we head back up. So we just stopped off at this pullout. We missed it the other day. It's the Wailua Valley State Wayside. And you can get a great view of Haleakala right there. I'm blocking it. And there's multiple waterfalls way off in the distance that you can make out. And uh, yeah, a lot of times it's covered in clouds and you don't get to see the top like that. So we're really lucky that we're getting a good view today. And uh, there's just one little cloud up there. So it's beautiful. We were there for sunset last night. Look how far we've come. We made it to our destination at Wayanapa Napa State Park. Now we're gonna head down to the Black Sand Beach. Oh, we uh, just uh, caught our first glimpses of the Black Sand Beach over there. This is a gorgeous area. I mean, the cliffs are incredible. I'm so glad that we came back and this was, uh, this was something we missed the other day and I'm really glad that we made up for it because uh, I wouldn't have wanted to miss this. Well, we made it to the Black Sand Beach. It's more of a lot of little tiny black rocks. And then once you get to the water, you kind of sink into it because it's wet. It's a little weird because you're not used to sand being this color.
it's really uh, rock underneath. They don't hurt too bad. Well, we bounced around the ocean for about 30, 45 minutes and uh, water was perfect. It's very clear. You can see all the way down to basically a black rock bottom. And now we're going to hike along this uh, trail alongside the uh, beach here. Uh, we're gonna look back at the beach and there's some caves here. Caves have some interesting Hawaiian lore. One of the kings brutally murdered one of the queens here because he saw her reflection in the cave and found out where she was hiding. And every spring, this bay is where shrimp come to hatch and those shrimp turn the bay red and it is to signify the blood of her brutal murder. So, such a beautiful place and such a nasty backstory. This is for sure a highlight on the road to Hana, perhaps even the top highlight. And actually the reservation system works to your advantage because it limits the amount of people who are here. Now the reason we came back a second day was because we decided to spur the moment go earlier in the week when we were up very early and the weather was nice. The weather is hit or miss here because they get a lot of rain. And so to the best of your ability, check the forecast and try to figure out a day that's the least cloudy. Make a reservation for that day. Well, we are up here now looking back at the beach over there. This is just such a beautiful place. I really feel like this is Hawaii. This is this is the landscape we were coming to see. It's things exactly like this. And this is definitely a must-do stop if you are on the road to Hana. You do not want to miss this. It is beautiful. Of course, it's a beautiful day. It could be rainy, it could be cloudy, but I still think you should come and see it because the landscape here is just gorgeous. You can't see anything from, I mean, there's no, there's no other islands on this side. So it's just a full view of the ocean, which is really cool. If you want to see more from our adventures to Maui, click right here and don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.